if you decide to pay them on a daily rate you have an idea how much you're spending you can make projections depending on your budget but those laborers those masons will not be incentivized to do their best because they know that regardless of how much blocks they lay on that particular day they will still make their money okay however if you decide to pay them on account basis hello guys welcome back to my channel this is michael from xenax snail farm and today we'll be discussing the stages i went through during the construction of my snail greenhouse and what it cost me during each of these stages this is meant for those that have a vision of their own snail farm they know what it wants what they want it to look like and they want to do it themselves or they have an idea of what they want to do but they don't have the experience so they want to outsource it to an external contractor however they want to have an idea of cost so that they can negotiate with this external contractor okay so without further ado let's get into it now it took me about eight steps eight stages to construct my greenhouse the first of this stage was to dig out the foundation of the greenhouse okay i have my board here so we have the stages stage number one the greenhouse foundation now what does this involve it involves three things one we have to excavate the outline of the greenhouse so this involves negotiating with artisans called diggers so they come with their diggers and they dig out all the partitions so a partition is normally 12 feet and that costs about a thousand naira to 1500 naira per partition okay so you can decide to hire two three or five artisans to dig out this partition depending on how long you want it to take now after digging out the outline of the greenhouse the next step we need to undertake is to blind this outline now the reason why we blind this outline is because we don't want to lay our foundation we don't want to lay our blocks directly on the topsoil because you can imagine when it rains each area in the soil has a different load bearing capacity so if they have a different load bearing capacity when it rains some areas are hard some are soft so those foundations would normally crack along those lines so this is, this is why we lay concrete along those outlines so that we have a strong base on which to now lay our blocks okay so we have the excavation And then we have the blinding where we pour concrete in order to build a solid base on which to lay our blocks now the third component of the cost when building when digging out the outline of this foundation was also the labor cost this labor cost involves paying the diggers that will dig out the foundation and also paying for their transportation to and from my site it cost about 89,000 naira to complete this stage okay now we move on to stage two which is building the dwarf fence Now, this stage is pretty much uh, self-explanatory. So we build out a dwarf fence in order to sort of protect the interior of the greenhouse from external predators like lizards, toads, and beetles and all that stuff. It involves one, we need to hire masons that will lay the blocks. Now, these masons would also hire their laborers these are the laborers that will mix their mortar and bring it to them 
and also bring their blocks from whatever those blocks are to the masons for them to now lay. So we have the block walk. During this block walk, you basically negotiate with the masons. Now, these negotiations can go one of two ways. You can either decide to pay the masons on a daily rate. So this means that regardless of how much blocks they lay on that particular day, you pay them a specific amount. But you can also decide to pay them on a count basis. So basically, you pay 14 error per block that was laid. The more blocks they lay that day, the more money they make. Now, each of these negotiation strategies have their own pros and cons. If you decide to pay them on a daily rate, you have an idea how much you're spending. You can make projections depending on your budget. But those laborers, those masons will not be incentivized to do their best because they know that regardless of how much blocks they lay on that particular day, they will still make their money. Okay. However, if you decide to pay them on a count basis, it is now in their interest to, to lay as many blocks as possible. So they will intend to do more work on that day. I will make a separate video detailing how I negotiated with these artisans. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned and subscribe. The second component of this cost was the plastering. The plastering of the dwarf fence and once again transportation. transportation of the laborers given that my farm is in a very remote area it made sense for me to go to where the artisans are hire a bus load those workers and the bus and then get them to my site it made it easier and it gives them an incentive to want to come to work for you because you can imagine if you put yourself in the position of an artisan it is in their interest to go to a place that is easily accessible to them so that they can make their money and go home as soon as possible. But if they have to go somewhere that is very, very remote and they have to worry about the added transport cost of going there, they wouldn't be interested in going there unless you pay them an exorbitant amount, which isn't to your interest. Okay, so I had to take care of the transportation. So these are the three components involved at this stage and it cost me about 138,004 hundred naira to complete the two offense okay moving on to the third stage of this process was leveling out the greenhouse floor Now the area that I mapped out to build my greenhouse was not a level ground. And you can imagine if you were to build a greenhouse on an inclined floor during the rainy season, when it rains a lot, then water will tend to accumulate at the low point of that base. And if you have any snails there, those snails will drown in the water. So it was very important that I made sure the ground floor of the greenhouse was very level. Coincidentally, during the process of building this greenhouse, I was also building my underground water reservoir. So all of the earth, mostly clay soil, that was used to level out the floor of the greenhouse came from the earth that we dug out during the construction of the underground water reservoir. So the cost involved at this stage was basically what I paid the fillers, those that took the earth from the underground water reservoir and placed it at the appropriate sections of the greenhouse. So this involved the filling work and the transportation of those laborers to and from my site. Okay. Now, if you don't have this issue, let's say you are lucky enough to have the area that you mapped out for your greenhouse being on a level ground, that means you can more or less skip this stage of the process. 
this cost me about 139,000 Naira. Okay. Now, moving on to the fourth stage, which was constructing the greenhouse modules. Now, after doing the filling work, we realized that most of the earth that we used to do the filling work we are clay soil, okay? And as we all know, clay soil does not support plant growth. And also, snails don't do well with clay soil. I mentioned in another video that I made earlier, the best soil for snail farming is loamy soil, okay? Now, if the soil that I used for the filling work was loamy soil, I wouldn't have had to build these modules. But because those soil were clay, I had to then construct these modules and then fill the modules with quality loamy soil. Okay, so the stages involved in this were building, excavating the foundation of the modules, and after you excavate the foundation of the modules, what, what else do you do? You blind the foundation so that you have a solid base on which to now lay your blocks. So, blinding. After that, you now hire masons that will then lay the blocks. Those masons will also hire their laborers. Okay. So, block work. All right. Now, after doing the block work, you now hire people that will feel the modules with topsoil okay of course you have to purchase the topsoil for this so so all in all this was one of the more expensive of the stages it cost me about 742,005 100 naira to complete this stage with about 60 or 70 percent of the cost going to purchasing the topsoil okay now stage five of this process was the roofing stage roofing stage. So this involved going to purchase the galvanized iron pipes. So galvanized iron pipes purchased. Hiring the welder to weld those iron pipes to shape. Welder. And also purchasing the shade net okay and hiring the vendors to come and install the shade net onto my greenhouse okay so installation shade net all in all these cost about 553,000 naira in total Okay, now the reason why we use the galvanized iron pipes for the roofing framework is because it is resistant to rust. If you were to use any other material like iron or wood, wood may not be termite resistant, so it wouldn't last long. Okay, so that's why I used this galvanized iron pipe. Okay, and we all know the reason for the shade net is just to reduce the light intensity coming into the greenhouse so that it does not create a very harsh condition for the snails okay that's pretty much that now where are we stage six 
this is the plumbing and electrical work so this stage involved buying the materials so the pipes from the plumbing work the control valves the gauge and everything and also for the electrical work just the wiring for it okay so material purchase and also the fee i paid the plumber to do the work so plumber fee same for the electrician electrician fee now it's important to bear in mind that the electrical stage was optional it's not a must that you have to have electrical lighting in your greenhouse for me i made the decision to go for it because i didn't want a situation where if i had to feed my snails at night or i want to for whatever reason do some sort of maintenance work in the greenhouse at night i wouldn't want to be walking around with my torch okay i would rather prefer to have light light bulbs up that i can just switch on and off okay so it cost me a total of 399 000 naira to complete this stage okay now moving on Moving on to stage seven, which was constructing the walkway. Okay. Now, when it comes to constructing the walkway, most of the greenhouse I had seen up to this point were done, those that had a walkway anyway, they did it with a concrete. So they poured concrete on the walkway. However, I decided against using concrete because, again, during the rainy season, once it rains, if there is any slope at all in your greenhouse, or even if there is no slope at all, when it rains a lot, water tends to accumulate on concrete. And if you don't have adequate drainage set up, then you can imagine if you have snails walking around on that walkway at that point, most of those snails will die. Now, if you use concrete to build your walkway, then you have to build tiny or small gutters that will channel water away from the walkway when it rains. So you have to, you have to allocate money for the walkway as well as money for the drainage. I wanted something that will help me, that will solve both of these problems at once. And that's where the idea of using interlocks came in. If you use interlocks to build your walkway, when it rains, those waters will be draining away from the gaps in the interlock. Now, the water that will be pouring inside the modules drain directly on the ground because it's just topsoil all the way through. But the ones that pour on the walkway will now drain through the gaps in the interlock. So you have drainage as well as a strong base to walk around to secure or monitor activities on your farm. So this is why I decided to go with an interlock for my walkway. So the cost breakdown for this particular stage involved the cost of purchasing the interlock bricks. The cost of paying the driver or the truck that delivered those interlocks from where I purchased them all the way to my farm. The cost of paying the laborers that will load those interlocks onto the truck at the source, move with the truck to my farm and then offload those interlocks to my farm. So loading and offloading.
and then the cost of paying the specialist or the artisan that will come and lay those interlocks brick by brick okay Now, in total, this cost about 674,800 naira. With the bulk of the money going to purchasing the interlock, I think about 500,000 or thereabout. Now, last but not least, the cost of building the trench. Now, the trench is the gutter you have around the greenhouse. This serves the purpose of deterring certain predators, certain crawling predators from having access to the greenhouse. Things like millipedes, centipedes, or some lizards. Okay, It just adds an additional layer of protection in addition to the shade net that you have and the chemicals that you pour inside this trench like the condemned engine oil or some other chemicals the smell can also deter some of these predators now the cost involved here was just the cost of excavation so we excavate the outline of the trench and after you excavate, what else do you do? You blind. So blinding. You blind so that you have a solid base on which to now lay your block. After blinding, of course, you do your block work. After block work, you do your filling. After the filling, you now plaster it so that it has a smooth surface. Okay. Now the reason why we do, or the reason why I did the filling work was, once again, if you can see in the picture that I will attach to this video, the greenhouse, the foundation of the greenhouse was not level okay so that means that if you're building your trench you can have two coaches of block at the high point but if you want to have a level trench all the way through then as you move towards that low point you'll be having more coaches of block in order to keep the level the same as what you started with okay now when you now want to do the base of the trench it means you have to feel you have to fill some of the sections with topsoil so that you have just the empty space that you want to contain your water being level at every point okay that means the ones that you don't need to fill up or the ones that you don't need water to fill up will have to be filled up by soil so that you can now build your blind your your base onto that soil okay i'll show you guys later in in a picture that i'll attach to this video somewhere so these are the five components that made up the expense for this particular stage. It cost me about 157,200 Naira to complete this stage. All right. So all in all, the cost of the labor, and the excavation the blinding and all that stuff for these eight stages came out to about two million eight hundred and ninety two thousand nine hundred now the other cost that came into this was just the cost of the building the core building materials like cement gravel sand block and water so cement gravel sand block and water 
all of this combined was about 850,000 in total. Okay? So the combined cost of everything came out to about 3,742,900. Now, it cost me this much to build my greenhouse and this is because of some of the challenges that I faced earlier which required me to build a module which required me to put in electricity inside there which also required me to use interlocks for my walkway now it's not a must that you have to use these things especially if you don't have some of these challenges so it's possible that you may build you may be able to build your own greenhouse at a much lower cost for example anywhere from 1 million to 1.5 or 2 million at the highest okay so I hope this gave you enough information, at least to be able to make an informed decision with regards to how much to pay your contractor or how much to budget if you intend to do it yourself. Okay. Now, later I will do another video detailing how I negotiated with some of these artisans and contractors. If you'll be interested in that, I would recommend that you subscribe and stay tuned. Until then, I remain Michael from Zanax Farm. Have a lovely day.